There's never a dull moment when it comes to Minnesota sports. Rather, it's positive or negative. The Yankees have swept the Twins. Minnesota Sports Chat has you covered. Talking nothing but Minnesota sports all year long. It's time now for the soon-to-be award-winning, if only in his own mind, Minnesota Sports Chat with your host, Ross Brendel. You know, you take two, three weeks off from this podcast, then you try and do two in the matter of hours. Suddenly you're tired. Really highlights the importance of your Beans Coffee. Beans Coffee Company. Doesn't it, Daniel House? I'm gassed. You're gassed already? Man, I'm, I'm just getting juiced up already right now. You must have more of that Coffee by Beans, Beans Coffee Company in your system than I do. Promo code sports chat will save you some cash at coffeebybeans.com on delicious small batch coffee, light roast, medium roast, dark roast, even caffeine free. If that's your thing, whatever you're looking for, head to coffeebybeans.com. Use that promo code sports chat. I'm Ross Brendel. Daniel House is joining me on this edition, number 214 of Minnesota Sports Chat. We're going to dive in to Gopher football specifically. Gophers in the draft, Gopher football in the transfer portal. That's a love of Daniel's, obviously, with gophersguru.com. Love of mine, Gopher football season ticket holder in the cheap seats, typically travel to one road game a year. Geez, Daniel, I get to eight or nine Gopher football games a year. I, I think I give that program probably too much money. Can I claim that on my taxes? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if I can. Maybe I can. I got to talk to my tax man about that. Please make sure if you're watching on YouTube, you like, you comment, you subscribe, turn on all notifications. If you're listening via podcast form, please rate and review kindly. I would really appreciate that. Let's talk gophers in the NFL draft. Specifically this year, just one, but he goes fairly high. I see you, G-Men. With the 47th pick in the 2024 NFL Draft, the New York football giants select Tyler Newbin. Safety, Minnesota. Now, Tyler Newbin is making his way to New Jersey. What do you think? His best safety in the draft class, the first one to go. He's got the production to back it up. 13 career interceptions. Charles, tremendous awareness, tremendous ball skills for Newbin. What is it? About, what are they doing in developing defensive backs up there? Because the instincts are what I always see out of these Minnesota DBs, especially guys in the middle of the field, Antoine Winfield, Tyler Newbin, their ability to range and make plays on the football. I love Newbin's ability to do that and come down and tackle. House, you'll remember better than I would, by the way, thanks to NFL Network for that audio. You would remember better than I would. This is like the fifth year in a row the Gophers have had a player go in the first or second round. That is a uh, pretty strong testament to the work of P.J. Fleck and his staff. And in this case specifically, pretty strong testament to our guy Tyler Newbin, who I think, much like Antoine Winfield, our guy Benjamin St. Just, I think he's going to make a pretty nice NFL player for himself in the secondary, especially for those New York football giants, as Tiki Barber said, apparently over some form of hip hop concert that they were at during that portion of the NFL draft. Yeah. When the beat drops, I mean, Tyler, the beat drop rate is Tyler <laughs> Newman got picked. That's, that's a good look, omen for Tyler, man. He, he brought the look beat, at you the over the one in the draft, the beat drops. The beat no, goes I, I, on, and in this case, he goes on to New York. I like the fit. Shane Bowen's defense, a lot of quarters coverage in Tennessee, so things that he did in Minnesota will be highly applicable. A uh, little bit of coverage disguise in that defense, too. They're going to be relying upon his versatility. Uh, felt like a fit from the beginning just because Bowen really emphasizes the ability to have a safety that can do so many different things in your defense and play football very smart process route combinations at a high level, understand what's coming and what, how to match it all up and make the coverage calls and get everybody in the right spot and then be able to make plays on the football and, and provide coverage uh, ability as well. So he's able to do all of those things. Uh, I think he ended up in a really good situation and uh, you know he's going to be an instant impact player for the Giants uh, in that situation too because of where their depth chart's at, losing Xavier McKinney in free agency. 
I don't know how much, Daniel, you can equate. Well, maybe actually, maybe you can. I'll ask you. The Gophers that have went to the NFL, even in middle rounds in the last, I don't know, four to eight years, they've had pretty good NFL careers, including Blake Cashman, who's coming home this year to play for the Minnesota Vikings. Are there things that the Gopher football program is doing that really helps these guys excel at the next level? And then I'll combo platter that with point number two. Is that something you can logically assume that PJ Fleck and his staff are hitting on the recruiting trail and the transfer portal trail saying, look, we might not be Alabama. We might not be Texas, but look at all the guys we're sending to the NFL. And not only are we sending them to the NFL, they're excelling when they get there. I would just say preparation, uh, the football IQ side of it, teaching guys how to handle all of the rigors of preparation, getting ready for every game, knowing tendencies, uh, how to study film, the the approach of you know what you should look for, how it can help you gain an edge to play faster on the field. Uh, those guys are pro ready when they come in. And that's something that I hear a lot from people that talk about Minnesota players that are in the NFL, especially on the defensive side of the ball. I hear the the preparation, the ability to just come in and be at that pro level and that side of it, where you don't have to hold the person's hand and teach them a whole bunch of stuff to get them up to speed schematically. They're ready to go in and uh, do the things that give them an edge, the details, they matter more than ever. And that's something that Minnesota really emphasizes with their players is the details, the fundamentals and uh, the techniques and those things apply to the next level and also tie directly into preparation, helping you play fast. Do you have an NFL comp for Tyler Dubin? Who would people listening to this podcast be able to say, oh, that might be the type of player he's going to be in the NFL mm. or can or can turn into? Who would that currently be in the NFL that Tyler Newbin could end up being one day or even immediately again, drafted in the middle of the second round? He's going to play next year. He may start. He may get the bulk of the playing time, but he's going to be expected to contribute unless he's uh, Lewis seen unplayable. What's Let's hope that that's not the case. Well, I would say I actually told somebody this the other day. uh, He reminds me of a better coverage skill Harrison Smith because of how he understands the game, the route recognition stuff, uh, the ability to, you know, do a lot of different things in your defense. Uh, That's somebody that I said right away was more skilled in coverage Harrison Smith, young Harrison Smith, not saying he's going to, you know, immediately be that type of guy but uh, I I like the potential and I believe just based off knowing Tyler knowing you know hearing about how he prepares from from coaches and people around the program there's no question he's going to translate really well correct me if I'm wrong I don't think I missed anybody but now that I say that I I probably did Gophers have three other players heading to NFL teams that I'm aware of Revan Span Ford got a nice little bag, as the kids like to say. I think I saw $225,000 in guaranteed money to sign with the Dallas Cowboys, who apparently really valued and liked him. Chris Altman Bell getting a New York Giants rookie camp invite, along with Tyler Baugh getting a New Orleans Saints rookie camp invite. Your thoughts on those three guys and their landing spots, probably specifically Brevin Span Ford. I think Altman Bell and Baugh probably have a, uh, Tough mountains to climb to make those rosters, but good for them to get into camps. Good for people to see them and hopefully set them up in a journey in other places, if not with the Giants and Saints. But specifically on Brevin Span Ford, it, it sounds like everything, at least right out of the gate and the money that they threw him, makes it seem like they think he's got a really good shot to make their roster. Yeah, and they needed some blocking in their tight end room, and Brevin can provide that along with the versatility and maybe some of the untapped potential as a receiver as well. I mean, in 2022, I believe he was third among tight ends in yards per route run. So he has shown he can do that. Uh, I think getting him down in weight, cutting back some weight, helping him to become faster moving in and out of breaks uh, in the receiving game will be beneficial for him. But that run blocking aspect is important when you look at their depth chart. They got Jake Ferguson, Luke Schoonmaker, a Peyton Hendershot, you, you look at uh, Brevin Span Ford's ability to run block. I think that's going to help him carve out a role. I would say as well that I think uh, Kyler Baugh is someone to watch throughout this process. I mean, this guy, 
he was a huge part of Minnesota's defense. He is one of the strongest players on the team. He plays with incredible effort. He's going to give you everything he's got. You know he'll be able to help you out on special teams, too, in that role. Uh, you know, the one-technique defensive tackle is a big part of what New Orleans does defensively, and they're going to need someone that can, uh, you know, provide a presence there and also the special teams ability. So I'm watching uh, uh, monitoring Kyler down in New Orleans. I think that's a good landing spot with Dennis Allen and his defense. One thing we've all been monitoring, Daniel House, is the transfer portal. By all accounts, whether it translates to on-the-field success, time will tell in the 2024 season for Gopher football. But we're seeing some really nice wins in the transfer portal. And again, that is a credit to P.J. Fleck and his staff. Uh, I'll give credit to Dinkytown Athletes, who apparently has at least enough money in the coffers to help get some of these kids here. And I assume other people stepping up with some monetary donations as well to make this happen. But by all accounts, Daniel, a pretty good transfer portal season for Gopher football. And I do want to highlight, although not a ton of experience, I think getting another quarterback in the quarterback room could be very beneficial because as I've mentioned before, if Max Brosmer isn't it or gets injured, the Gophers could be in a lot of trouble because there's just not a lot of experience in that quarterback room. So getting, um, uh, boy, I'm blanking on his first name, uh, Whitkey from Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech, Dylan, yep. Yep, at least a year of playing college football and being on a campus with a program, I think that could be beneficial. But your thoughts on the Gophers in transfer portal season window number two. Did we indeed go 1-0 and in transfer portal window number two championship season? I would say a lot of these moves are actually future moves. Uh, You look at like Jackson Howard, I think he could come in and help you rotationally right now, but he's going to be someone that steps into a larger role when Danny Strigow departs. Uh, Adam Kasai is a developmental pass rusher uh, from Clemson who just needs to get stronger, needs to fill out his frame, but he's a very, has a very unique skill set, you know, six, eight, long pass rusher with the quick twitch traits, but now it's all about refining everything, getting them physically ready. Tyler Williams, a transfer wide receiver uh, from Georgia, uh, a a different type of skill set than they have in their wide receiver room, a long uh, pass catcher with, with some height that can, that can go up and get the ball in traffic. Uh, I think, you know, the movement skill side of it is what I noticed while watching him play can really transition out of breaks well for a guy with a size profile another player who will need to continue getting play additional play strength uh at the wide receiver position and technical refinement so i want to see where he's at when he comes in here you know we didn't see he spent some time in george's program we need to see where he's at when he arrives because we haven't been able to get on field evaluation dylan whitkey's got some athletic ability uh maybe some sort of sub packagey type of quarterback where you can come in and give you some something in the quarterback run game if you want to do that uh but you know that quarterback room you mentioned it now this is something to note they have they have nobody in that quarterback room that's taken a power four snap or even no, like an nobody. fps level snap max brosner fcs level you know i think i think you know his experience there is huge but you know dylan whitkey you got uh, drake Lindsay, a true freshman who i thought I think he's going to be really good in the future. I, I already see the flashes. I think I'm very high on, on Drake Lindsay in the future, but um, you know, that quarterback room right now, there's not a lot of actual high level playing experience. I think Brosmer is going to have to get used to the speed of this game where, you know, the windows tighten, the, the speed of the game is faster. You have to shape the football differently. The different route types that you throw, they happen a lot quicker in the power five level. So you got to be able to get to that point where, you know, the speed catches up, but I know the intelligence, his leadership skills, uh, people were really raving about that uh, during the spring. And that will come with time developing chemistry with the pass catchers. But I would say, you know, you look at this transfer portal, Alume Nikele, offensive lineman, big six, eight, three, 170 pound right tackle probably going to provide some more depth behind some of the options that they already have in the right tackle room, especially since Cade McConnell uh, entered the chance report and went to uh, Vanderbilt. On Brosmer and the passing game, I don't know if every Gopher fan's going to want to hear this, but to me, 
what you just talked about, Daniel, and the lack of experience that we all know is in that quarterback room, it underscores to me, even though the Gophers want to pass the football more and they've basically put out every signal for all intents and purposes that they're going to try and pass the ball more, they're still going to need to run the ball more, or not more, sorry, run the ball enough to help set up that pass game, take the pressure off of the quarterbacks, And again, to your point, Daniel, outside of Daniel Jackson, I still don't think we know what the weapons look like on this team outside of offensive line and running back. So I think this is a a team that I still think can win six or seven games next year. I'm hopeful that they can be a bowl team, take a step up from last year. I don't know if they can be much better than that, but assuming you can keep these guys together, and that's a big if, like when you say, Some of these guys are developmental guys or they're for the future. I don't think we can say with any certainty at all that these guys will be here. Maybe a Jackson Howard coming home. Maybe he will stay, but we've already seen it. We saw it in this draft guys that played for three. uh, One kid was drafted, played for four colleges. Now two of them were junior colleges, but in today's day and age, when you bring a kid in and you say it's developmental and I'm not putting it on you, Daniel, but I just don't think you can assume that that kid's going to be here for two years and wait it out to get his playing time. So that's a very loaded, loaded kind of thought that I just threw out there. But I think there's, there's a lot here, Daniel, when it comes to transfer portal, but also just still figuring out what you have in the quarterback room. And to your point, Daniel, maybe Whitkey gets some of that throwback here. He gets some of that green line package just to add a little bit of another dimension to the offensive game. So I just threw out about 10 things there. You respond to whatever you'd like. Yeah, I, I think that's the biggest challenge, you know, when you look at roster, you know, overall uh, wide receiver position, you know, they really need Tyler Williams to hit here because, I mean, you, you need a jump from Elijah Spencer. You need a jump from Lamecky Brockington. Can you get something out of Donnell Newcase or Kendrick Lanier, TJ McWilliams, younger players that spent a year developing up? You're going to need one of those guys to take a step along with Lamecky and Elijah Spencer, I think Lamecki has made a lot of strides in his game, improving, you know, his route running, short area quickness, and all those things that are required to play the position. But I do think there are some question marks in that wide receiver room about, you know, like who's going to emerge, can they step up? And I'm not saying, you know, Brosmer it, that you know, he has FCS experience, and that's certainly valuable. But when you look at like FBS Power Four experience, the Gophers don't have that in their quarterback room. So I think. You know, Brosmer's leadership ability, his football intelligence, his all of those things that the coaching staff is talking about, those things will help him transition. I just worry about like what happens if Brosmer goes down and then you you're you're having to put somebody in that doesn't have a lot of experience. That along with looking at the defensive side, the interior of the defensive line, I think that's gonna be one area that I'm watching throughout the season. Do they have enough depth at that spot? Uh we'll certainly find out. I, I didn't get enough. This spring, you know, being at three practices, I don't have enough, you know, you know, information to be able to formulate many opinions regarding like where they're at in every aspect of their roster right now. I'll have more in later August, probably. House, I can tell you what happens if Brosmer goes down or he's ineffective because I have lived it and seen it. And so have you. We once watched the Gophers win a game where Chris Strevler and the entire team passed for seven yards. That will be <laughs> that will be the plan if they can't get anything out of the quarterback position. I say that facetiously. If they can't get anything out of Brosmer, Daniel, this season could go pear-shaped really quickly. I mean, I'm not saying, again, maybe Whitkey could step up and be a good player. To your point, we just don't know. I think we'll... We'll start to get answers when they go to practice before the season starts. And we'll get some answers when they take the field at home on a Thursday night at Huntington Bank Stadium and take on North Carolina. Daniel, all this great info, Gophers related. It's at gophersguru.com. Your ads. Oh, boy. Are you Daniel House MN now on the X machine? What are you? Yes. MN. Okay. What's at gophersguru.com right now? People should be aware of. You can read all about the transfers that I highlighted in this podcast, get a little deeper analysis on each of them. Uh, We'll start looking at the roster soon here, just discussing what the Gophers are able to do in the spring, how they're setting up heading into the fall. Uh, Lots of stuff coming up on the website as we enter the summer and get ready for the season. I mean, hey, 
August will be here before we know it. So it's right around the corner. State Fair looms, Daniel House. The Minnesota State Fair looms. It looms fast. We're not talking about it anymore beyond that. That is Daniel House. MN on the Twitter slash X machine. I am at the Ross Brendel. This is Minnesota Sports Chat. If you're watching on YouTube, like and comment, subscribe, turn on all the notifications. If you're listening via podcast form, please make sure you like, comment, rate, review, do all that cool stuff to help me grow this podcast. And thank you to those that have done this. This has been just a tremendous venture and a great experience. You can find a lot of my other work with uh, Score North as well. Daniel, thanks a ton, buddy. We'll talk again real soon. Hey, I appreciate it. And I will talk to you very soon in this very feeder right here on YouTube on Minnesota Sports Chats. Thanks for listening to Minnesota Sports Chat, presented by Beans Coffee Company. Use the promo code SPORTSCHAT. That's one word, sports chat, to save at checkout. Follow Ross on X at the Ross Brendel. Like and subscribe to Minnesota Sports Chat wherever you get your podcasts. Rate and review kindly.